With its 50-year history, no one today can doubt the power of television to influence audiences and change public opinion. Therefore, it is not surprising, given 30 years of hostile relations, that the United States government wants to export television to Cuba. The U.S. government's television broadcasting to Cuba is called TV Marti, and it uses telecommunications frequencies which have been allocated by international convention for Cuba's domestic use. RT raises serious legal, political, and technical questions which go far beyond the relations between these two countries. There are serious international implications. For example, is it feasible and desirable for a foreign government to intentionally broadcast into another nation? Does it violate international norms? What right does a country, a sovereign nation, have to protect its own borders, be they land, sea, or air? In an effort to unravel these and other issues, we have spoken to experts in Havana, Cuba, and in Washington, D.C. According to the Television Broadcasting to Cuba Act, Congress finds and declares it is the policy of the United States government to support the right of the Cuban people to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any medium, regardless of frontiers. The idea is to hang a balloon 10,000 feet over Key West and to broadcast television signals uh, to Cuba. Now, this is a clear violation of the 1982 International Telecommunications uh, convention to which we are a signatory uh, and it is also technically extremely uh, dubious. You can transmit a TV signal a hundred miles to be sure but it will only be received if the receiving party uh, wishes to receive it. The International Telecommunications Union regulations uh, does in fact designate AM broadcasting, medium wave radio broadcasting, and television broadcasting as domestic broadcasting media. So from a, um, a reading of that principle, broadcasting of, of a television signal across a border unilaterally, as this would be, is on the face of it and at least violates the spirit of that of that uh, regulation, if not the letter of that regulation. Cuban position, as has been stated in different uh, international organizations, is that uh, this project of TV Mati is uh, completely illegal. It's contrary to the uh, Nairobi Convention of 1982 of the International uh, Telecommunications Union. And it's uh, also illegal in terms of uh, bilateral agreements that exist uh, between Cuba and the United States. Uh, we believe that by uh, international standards and also by the standards of relations between nations, uh, this is a completely illegal, illegal project that violates uh, also Cuba's uh, sovereignty and Cuba's independence.
The U.S. government, through its international radio network, Voice of America, has been broadcasting to Cuba for decades. In 1985, under pressure from a vocal small sector of the Cuban-American community, the Reagan administration began broadcasting short and medium wave radio to Cuba, known as Radio Marti. In 1989, Congress approved $7.5 million for a 120-day test of television broadcasting to Cuba. The proposal that TV Marti uh, incorporates is a proposal that necessitates a very peculiar and highly vulnerable technical system. Uh, the plans call for a balloon to be tethered somewhere in the Florida Keys at a, at a height of about two miles in order to be above the horizon sufficiently for it to be able to reach its target, which is supposed to be Havana, Cuba. Proponents of uh, TV Marti uh, argue that this is something that's very necessary and it would, um, it would provide the Cubans with more information than they are now receiving. And, of course, opponents of TV Marti argue that, as they did for Radio Marti, that it's not necessary, that, um, in the, in the case of TV Marti, there are technical problems affecting U.S. broadcasters, and that it would be better, be better if the programming didn't go on. Uh, if you look at us, the way we look at it, that this is a uh, electronic aggression, the matter is not of contents. The matter is that not accept what you're forced to accept. And the matter is not of, of contents, but it, because if you analyze the uh, the program of the Cuban television. Uh, we have 70% of our programs are made in Cuba, and 30% is uh, foreign. This 30% is, uh, we use programs from 26 countries in uh, last year, 1989. If we analyze like the films we put in our programs of television, 42% uh, of the films uh, come from the United States. So it's not a matter of contents. Hello, I'm Ralph Wendy, host of CNN World Report. On behalf of my colleagues, we're delighted to learn that the Cuban Television Network will air a weekly version of our program. In general, everything, because you know, our television is very uh, integral. We have uh, poli uh, political programs, we have educational programs, we have uh, uh, recreational programs. It is so, so whole. I, I love it. We have American movies being shown on our TV uh, channels every Saturday, Sunday. I think we have over over six new films every week. So uh, I don't see the point of doing that exactly. We have radio waves, uh, FM, short waves. Miami is just 90 miles away from here, so. Uh, Anyone who wants to listen to American stations, they, they just turn on the radio and have. 1130 at the Florida Keys, hottest radio station. I'm Marcus and D with uh, Madonna on Whale 99. La Isla Bonita. but uh, really no one in the Congress uh, seems to care that this is a blatant violation of an international convention to which we are a signatory. Um, but Congress has at least said that uh, it must be technically feasible. Now, when you tether a balloon at that kind of height in an area that has uh, severe weather conditions, uh, winds, hurricanes, and the like, to think that there is sufficiently uh, stable technology to keep that signal from, from wavering and thereby interfering with American broadcasters, domestic American broadcasters, is hard to envision. Uh, moreover, uh, the history of this kind of technology in that area does exist. Uh, our understanding is 
that the Coast Guard uses tethered balloons for radar uh, surveillance uh, in, in, in that same area, which we hear more than half of the year they have to pull down those balloons because of severe weather conditions. Well, it's, it's highly implausible to think that a broadcasting program, which is supposed to be a daily broadcast, comes down every time there's severe weather. Now, the alternative is that they might send an airplane to fly and circle on, in, in American airspace uh, to do the same job as the balloon is designed to do. In that case, the stability of that signal is even more vulnerable. That is, we don't believe that you can technically keep that outgoing signal from interfering with domestic television broadcasting in the United States. Um, the government has decided that it's going to conduct a test of this technology. No funds can be expended until the president makes a determination to the Congress that number one, the TV broadcasting to Cuba is feasible, and number two, that the, radio, the signal from TV Marti itself does not interfere with the U.S. broadcasters. Now, of course, the president's determination comes from the test period. We have said that this is a, a hostile project hostile in its intention because uh, it tries to, to subvert, the, the, uh, subvert Cuba society. It is a, a, a project that uh, really, uh, by which the U.S. government tries to impose its will on the, on the Cuban people. But uh, not only that, it's not only hostile, it's not only illegal, but it's even more, it's offensive to uh, Cuba's history and to the spirit uh, of the Cuban people. It's really sad and bitter to, to know that in the behalf of a man like Jose Marti, we are going to have this monstrosity of TV Marti, which is not going to talk about the American poets Jose Marti used to love and the American poets Marty praised in his prose as Walt Whitman and Emerson. I'm really revolted about that. We're not going to know nothing about the real United States, about the struggle of minorities, about the, the existence of an underground world of, of resistance, too, that we do need to know in Cuba. As American citizens, we have grown up believing in and cherishing the concepts of the freedom of expression and free flow of information. But what constitutes the free flow of information between nations? Actually, this expresses the philosophy of free market, but it is also used for political aggression. This concept of the free flow is being used to substantiate this aggression against Cuba. Well, the Bush administration is explaining that television Marti is, is to, the purpose behind it is to provide the Cubans with information, to give them freedom of information, which uh, supposedly they don't have. The United States policy with respect to Cuba has, has been one in which our rights as U.S. citizens, our First Amendment rights to freedom of information, freedom of speech, freedom to travel, have been violated uh, continuously. From the very beginning, our right to travel to Cuba was restricted uh, first by prohibiting the use of U.S. passports, and then when President Carter opened up travel, the Reagan administration closed it down again by saying that this was a violation of the blockade, so we can't travel to Cuba and spend money. Again, that's a violation of our First Amendment right, freedom to travel, freedom to get information for ourselves. In addition, there have been restrictions on uh, importation of Cuban publications in the United States, as well as restrictions on the export of U.S. publications publications to Cuba. So the blockade has has all along violated principles of the First Amendment 
uh, by prohibiting this kind of exchange of information. And even now, even after Congress has opened up a small space to allow the importation of Cuban publications into the United States to um, adhere to some of the principles of the First Amendment, the Treasury Department is trying to make that as difficult as possible and providing regulations that make it almost impossible for someone to go to Cuba to actually buy these publications and import them into the United States. So First Amendment principles have been violated all along. In addition, I, as a professor of law, cannot go to Cuba to give a lecture on U.S. law, something which we would think would be very important in terms of information exchange, particularly those of us who believe in justice. Uh, but I can't give a lecture because the blockade doesn't permit it. Access to information is just one of the concerns. Sovereignty is another central issue. Sovereignty is an easy word to define, but a difficult one to understand in practice. Under international norms, a nation state has the lawful authority to control what happens within its air, land, and sea space. Respect for a nation's sovereign borders is a basic premise of international order, and historically, violations of a nation's borders have led to regional conflicts and even world wars. Given that Cuba believes Television Marti is an electronic invasion of its sovereign borders, what will Cuba do? What are its options? This is one of the options we have to block the signal coming to Cuba. We know as, uh, concerning the feasibility studies of the project of TV Marti that Havana City is the main target. But anyway, we are taking some steps to block the signal in neighboring provinces. Secondly, we have in mind to use very powerful AM transmitters to knock out hundreds of radio stations in all over the territory of the United States. In, in the third place, uh, we have in mind to jam Radio Marti signal, something which is done very easily. This is Radio Taino. We have expressed our right to contract this project by all means that will be available to us. Particularly, I think this will create a, a serious obstacle in relations or in, in improving the climate of uh, uh, current relations between Cuba and the United States. It will prevent uh, any kind of progress in different uh, bilateral issues that are pending between our countries. And we will take uh, all measures and all steps that we deem appropriate uh, to counteract this uh, project. If we think we have the right to broadcast to them in violation of their sovereignty and without consultations, they will retaliate. The Reagan administration, when faced with this prospect at the time it established Radio Marti, said that it would go in with surgical airstrikes to take out those antenna. What will the Bush administration do? Are they going to go in with surgical airstrikes? Are they going to back down? Uh, what will they do? We are in violation of the International Convention, not the Cubans. Uh, so th this has the potential to be a major international incident, a major international problem, possibly even leading to an armed conflict, and certainly it will have a very deleterious effect on American radio broadcasting. Well, this project doesn't even represent the Cuban-American community in the United States, not even less in Miami. It represents a, it's very, a very vocal sector of the community, but not the majority of the community. 
principally because the Cuban American national, uh, the Cuban American community in the United States is in favor, majority-wise, of solving the problems that exist between the United States and Cuba through negotiations and not through confrontation. And this project, TV Martí, is a confrontational project. It is not a project that will solve problems. It is a problem. It's a project that will create more problems and more tensions. Look, the basic situation is this. Of course, we have all kinds of disagreements with the Cubans and conflicts of interest. And under the best of circumstances, we would be in something of an adversarial relationship, sure. But there's no reason that adversaries uh, can't advance their interest more through uh, dialogue and negotiations than, than through confrontation. Uh, the idea that we must do this to try to pressure Cuba to negotiate with us or, or to adopt a different posture is utterly absurd. Uh, Cuba has for some time now made it clear that it is ready, it is perfectly ready, to sit down with us to discuss all disagreements, all problems between us, and to negotiate most. We are a country which should believe in the rule of international law and international norms, and we are a country which should resort to negotiations, diplomacy, consultations first. In this case, we most certainly have not. itself is illegal and is a violation of international law. And although it is not physical terrorism, I believe it is psychological terrorism. And since our country is opposed to terrorism and believes in the law, it has violated both. I don't believe that escalating animosities between peoples is a way to resolve problems. I would hope that uh, the American people would come to understand that the idea of TV Marti, just by the very nature that it is an illegal act, would protest the fact that our country is doing yet another thing that is illegal. We are not only striving and struggling for our rights, but we believe we are also struggling and striving for the rights of the third world. This could be done to Cuba and that could be done tomorrow to any other nation that has not the possibility and the strength and the economical and technological strength of the United States. We live in a world whose future depends upon negotiation to resolve conflict and communications to further peace. Television Marti could place the global telecommunications order in chaos and could further conflict in a world where peace is already too scarce. Can a television broadcast be worth all that?